Accounting for our water needs. How do we account for water use? What is the difference between water consumed and water withdrawn? What is the water footprint tool? We'll look at these questions in this video. Fresh water is the basis of all life. This image shows that there are regions throughout the world where the amount of water needed to sustain human life and dilute pollutants to acceptable levels exceeds what is available through rivers and groundwater. That is, there's a scarcity of fresh water in different regions of the world. How do we account for the stock of fresh water available in the amount that we need? The traditional method of measuring water has two categories of use, consumption or withdrawal. This image depicts the differences between the two accounting categories of water. When the water is used and then returned to the closed system, as is often the case for water used in residential homes, we consider this water withdrawn. The water returned to the municipal system then requires treatment to be used again. When the water is used and exits the closed water system, that water is consumed. Consumptive water use is defined as use that removes mass of water from the local water supply. This image shows the difference in the water withdrawn and the water consumed in the United States. Recall that the water withdrawn will return for treatment and reuse, while the water consumed is lost from the fresh water storage system. A newer method of accounting for water has been developed by Hoekstra and others. This method is called the water footprint. It's a method that accounts for the volume of water associated with human economic activity. The water footprint tool differentiates between three types of water, green water from precipitation, blue water from groundwater and surface water, and gray water, which will be explained. The water footprint tool recognizes that all goods and services have a life cycle and that each stage of the life cycle, water is used as a resource and pollutants are emitted. In the water footprint model, volumes of fresh water are needed to dilute or assimilate the load of the pollutants to the natural background concentrations and existing ambient water quality standards. In the water footprint model, this volume of water required to dilute the pollutants to the acceptable levels is called gray water. For an individual, the water that is used to create a product is used indirectly and the water footprint tool accounts for direct use and indirect use. An example of direct water use would be the water you use each day for cooking, cleaning, and sanitation. The indirect use is associated with the embedded water in goods and services that you use. Traditional measures of water use are also shown on this slide. Note that the traditional measures do not account for the systemic use of water, nor do they account for pollutants. This chart of water scarcity is based on national water footprints. Let's consider how the water footprint tool examines national water footprints. Within a country, production activity results in goods and services that are internally consumed or exported. There's also trade activity, consumed in the country or re-exported into goods and services. This results in what is called the virtual water budget. As you can see, the virtual water budget is a sum of the water footprint of national consumption and the virtual water exported. You might wonder why it's called virtual water and not simply water. Note that these volumes of water are the volumes required, not actually the volumes used. For example, the water footprint tracks water needed to dilute pollutants, but it is not always the case that water is used to dilute pollutants to acceptable levels. This image is a case study on coffee and tea for the Netherlands. As shown, because coffee and tea are water intensive crops, they result in a large virtual water footprint. Traditional methods for water use consider only the volumes of water withdrawn from local water supplies and not returned. In the United States, 85% of the water consumed is through irrigation and livestock use. The water footprint tool is more holistic than traditional accounting methods and considers the volume of water needed for both direct and indirect use. Indirect use consists of water embedded in goods and services throughout the life cycle. The water footprint tool also considers the water needed to dilute the pollutant load to acceptable quality standards. The water footprint allows a picture of national virtual water budgets associated with economic activity.